In today's video, we're going to continue on this subject of what is repentance, part two. I did a part one, check it out. Um, I'll put the little tab there on the screen. But I really felt like there was a necessity to talk about this, at least from my perspective, because I've seen so many people say terms like, preachers need to preach more on repentance, or the church is too soft, they're not touching on sin, and there's no repentance in the pulpits. And I'm sure there's some truth to a lot of those statements, but they're, they're such big umbrella statements that I think that they do a disservice when truly understanding what repentance is. And to be honest, I believe people see it more as a sackcloth and ashes type experience of a wallowing in your sin and feeling ashamed and feeling bad and beating yourself, uh, you know, carrying the weight of our sin compared to the holiness of God. Um, as I mentioned in the video prior to this, I wanted to say again that repentance is a response. I'm not initiating. And I think if we lay a groundwork and see repentance from a responsive perspective rather than from a initiating perspective, then I'm not doing this to get something from God. I'm actually responding to God in repentance. Uh, the Bible says that the goodness of God leads one to repentance and that we love Him because He first loved us. And another statement I want to just reiterate is that we're not necessarily repenting away from something. I think we're very fixated on repentance is doing away with sin more or less, we are repenting toward someone. And that is our Father. That I'm coming to my Father. I'm coming to be reaffirmed of who I am. I'm coming for Him to um, gift me something so that I can live in righteousness. And so I think when you see repentance as responsive and I'm coming toward God, not just away from sin, it starts to put it in a proper perspective. So what is it? Re, re, and, and, and I want to start down here. Repentance is a process of responding to God's love and the Holy Spirit working in your heart. So repentance is a process. It's a, it's a continual process, something that we will continually do throughout the course of our relationship with the Father. Um, it's, it's, it's known or best understood as a, a place of surrender and then living from that place of surrender. Uh, John the Baptist said, He may increase and I may decrease. And I think that's a place of surrender. Like, I am surrendering to this process. I am surrendering to the goodness of God. I'm, I'm surrendering to the love of God. I'm surrendering to the grace of God and to the mercy of God. And, and, and so the question is not, did I repent? Or did that person repent? It's, am I repentant? Or are they repentant? And that's an ongoing, responsive um, nature toward the goodness of God. So how does somebody repent? As I look through the scriptures, I see a few key things that take place. And I come to these conclusions that there's four ways that we can properly repent. I don't see this as just a, a, a to-do list when you do something wrong, but I see it as a good guide for us to understand um, have I been repentant? And here is kind of what I look through. Uh, one, confess, confess the sin. The sin that the Holy Spirit has dealt with you about. The sin that you know you have been struggling with. The thing that you know you should not do but you're partaking of. Uh, confess that openly, publicly uh, to God and to others in your life that you trust, not to get forgiven, but because you already are forgiven. So when I'm confessing my sin, it is not, this is the very thing that keeps me from hiding. This is the very thing that keeps me from keeping it in so nobody knows. This is the very thing that keeps shame on my life, but I'm confessing my sin not to get forgiveness from God. He has already extended that to me. I am doing this in response to that which He has already done. He has already reconciled me. He has already forgiven me. He has already um, showed me His love and He's already shown me His goodness. So I'm responding and I'm confessing, or another word would be to acknowledge sin. 
Now, the key thing here is not to acknowledge, I'm so unworthy, I'm just a sinner. The key thing is to acknowledge, Father, I've done this. And I do that so that I, it's almost like taking the trash can here and emptying the trash can out. That's kind of how I see confession. It's no, no other purpose except to empty the trash can out, to make sure that you, you, you rid yourself of something that maybe you're trying to hide. So I confess my sin not to get forgiven um, because I already am. I confess it so that I can empty the trash can. Second thing is I receive just as I would a gift, His righteousness. Now, this is something that has already been given to me, so we're not receiving it in the fact that He's just handing it to us. But I put myself back in a place immediately in saying, Father, I confess my sin. And the moment shame, there's shame that's knocking on the door, it's ready to attach itself to your heart and to your mind the moment you confess. That's why we struggle at times to confess. The moment shame is there, I receive. And I receive my standing before Him. I am a deserving son. He has given me this place because of Christ. I'm an heir of God, a joint heir with Christ. I've been made blameless, holy, uh, and without reproach in Christ Jesus. So I receive that. And the, the key word is to receive. Because at that moment, you want to receive anything but what you don't deserve. You know, I want to receive shame and guilt and, man, I feel bad for all that I did. And uh, the key thing is to receive it immediately. Don't let this linger. Don't allow yourself to, you know what, I really deserve shame and I deserve guilt. And so I'm going to wallow in this. Um, it's important as you confess uh, to immediately receive as you would a gift his righteousness. That is, that is the, the standing that you have before Him because of the covenant that He has made with Christ. Uh, the third thing I would say is to stand firm in His grace. Uh, grace, because of what Jesus has done, is affirming us that that sin, there's no, no more record of it. It has been, just as I would do this, it has been what? It has been wiped away. And now that is my that is my record. It is what? Clean. I have a clean record before God. So I'm standing in that grace because again the enemy, the accuser of the brethren is going to come and he's going to try to get you off of that place of saying, you know what? I am innocent. It's not that I didn't commit the sin. No, I am innocent because I've received what? His righteousness. And so that gift allows me to stand in a place of, I am innocent as far as the east is from the west. So law, so far, the Lord uh, has removed my sins from me. So I confess my sin, immediately receive as I would a gift His righteousness. I now stand in that grace uh, because the devil is going to come knocking and saying, but you did this and you did this and you don't deserve this. And how can you receive righteousness? He's going to come with the full gamut of trying to get you off of grace. Uh, if you want to look at it, Romans 5 verse 2, and I think you'll see that. Romans 5 verse 2 about standing in the grace of God. Uh, lastly, and I think this is a big one, enjoy His mercy. Many of us feel bad about His mercy, like, I'm so sorry, Lord, I need your mercy. That's what we need. He knows that we need it. In fact, the Bible says that in Ephesians chapter 2, He is rich in mercy. The psalm uh, says that His mercies are new every morning. And so I think this is important to understand to enjoy experiencing His mercy. Enjoy the fact that you're innocent. Enjoy the gift of righteousness. Enjoy the fact that He did not throw you away because you acknowledged and confessed your sin. In fact, He takes pleasure in those who receive from Him, who stand in grace, and who enjoy the mercy of God. Uh, that is a process of repentance that has been very good for me. It's taken the function out of it, the religion out of it, and allowed me to relate to God as I'm confessing that which I have done against Him. And remember, the reason for confession is not because God doesn't know it. It's because it's important for you not to hide it. Because when we hide something, shame is attached to that. And shame has no part of the life of a believer. So confess your sin, not to be forgiven, but because you already are. 
receive His righteousness, stand in the grace of God, and enjoy His mercy. Repentance is a process of responding to the love of God and to the working of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was clear. Uh, Share it with somebody who may need it um, or ask you this question. And thank you for subscribing. Have a good day.